relations. Today we will explore relations. Let me start with the most significant relation, mother. A bond we are born with. Let's take her blessings and move forward. Other relations are like brothers, sisters and friends. Well, we can have many friends. Then we have associations like teachers to school, employees with employers. So let's take teachers. Many teachers can be associated with a school. Employers to employers, that's an interesting relation. You know, there could be many employees working for an employer. Some employees may be employed elsewhere also. So we see relations are very complicated. But in some way or the other, a group is associated with another group with a rule in between, which forms a relation. We all have identities, but we are identified mainly by our deeds, and for that, we have a sin number. Well, sin number is an unique identity. Every individual has just one sin number. We call this kind of a relation as one to one relation. Mother. Mother could have many children. Therefore, all the brothers and sisters are linked with mother. This is many to one. Relation. Friends. One to many. Similarly, employers, employees, they are either many to one or one to many. We can see relations from the other side also. When we say teachers to school, there could be many teachers associated with the school. We could also see this relation from school to teachers. In that case, a school will have many teachers. And in that case, school to teachers, it becomes one to many relation. So, in short, we see that relations are between two groups where elements in one group are associated with the elements in the other group. At least they should have one association, they could have more also. Each element in the first group, let's summarize this. So we have a group here and another set of group there. We'll call this as the first group and this as the second group. Each individual in a group is element of that group they are connected with the elements of the other group. Sometimes there could be two. It's possible to get this kind of association also. All this depends on the rule. This rule binds the two groups. So relation is 
an association is an association between two groups and we see they are bound by a set of rules so that every element in the first group has a corresponding link one or more in the second group so in short that is how we are looking into relations well as you know mathematicians they are fond of numbers and we love extra cash here is sam sam decides to do some extra earning this summer by car wash and he expects to get 10 dollars for every car wash so let's say this group represents number of cars and this group represents revenue if sam does one car wash he gets 10 dollars for two 20 dollars for three 30 dollars for seven $70. We'll call group 1 as the input and group 2 as the output. Let each element in group 1 be represented by variable x and every element in group 2 be represented by the variable y. The rule which binds them is times 10. Times 10. This mapping diagram can be represented in the form of algebraic equation. y equals to 10x. We see this is one to one relation. Every element in group 1 is uniquely linked with an element of group 2. So value of group 2 element can be determined by multiplying value of input element of group 1 by 10. Well, the set of elements in group 1 are known as domain and the set of elements in the group 2 is called range. In our case, the domain is set of numbers 1 to 7 and the range is dollar amounts 10, 20, 30 to 70. There are many other ways to represent these relations. We have already seen two, three ways. One, expecting in re relations expressed in the form of mapping tag
this is this. And then we have algebraic equation. In this case, the equation y equals to 10x expresses the revenue from car wash for Sam. This can be plotted in the form of a scatter graph. Here, we take the independent variable, which is number of cars along x-axis, and dependent variable, which is earnings in dollars along y-axis. One car wash, $10, 2 20 3 30 so on. That's a scatter plot or a graph. As you can see, in a scatter plot, we've got coordinates. These coordinates are for us 110, 220, 330, 770. These set of coordinates gets their first coordinate from independent variable and the second coordinate from dependent variable in our case y independent variable for us is x and set of these points represents the relation. This is called set form. So, and as you know, in words, we can always represent our relation. Earnings are in dollars. Uh, 10 times the number of car wash. In this particular case, our relation is one on one, one to one. Okay, now it's time to really define a variable. Here I have the definition. I'll read it for you. The relation R is a rule that produces association between first set of elements called domain and the second set of elements called the range such that to each element in the domain there corresponds one or more elements in range. Let's have a second look at what we have done today. The relations, all these relations in the world we have, mother, friends, teachers, association with employees and employees, sin number. Now, if you look into this relation, mother, then what do you think? What is the domain? The whole population, it becomes a domain in the case of mother, you know. So, and you can see some of our relations are one-to-one -one relation, some are many-to-one, some are one-to-many relation. These relations can be expressed in different ways. This is the mapping diagram where we map each element of group 1 to the elements of group 2. Group 1 represents the domain and group 2 represents the range for our relation and these groups are linked with a set of rules. These rules 
are so defined so that each and every element of group 1 is associated with at least one element in group 2. There are many ways to represent our relations. We can represent the relations with mapping diagrams, with algebraic equations, graphically, or in the set forms, or even in words. To summarize, relations are rules that produces association between first set of elements called domain and the second set of elements called the range, such that to each element in the domain there corresponds one or more elements in the range. Here are some points to think about. One, let's talk about a relation. A is brother of B. Then, is it true that B is brother of A? Think about it. Well, it may not be true. B could be sister of A. So relations are not that simple. You got to think about it. Another thing which we'll look into, as I said, graphs can represent relations. Here's a graph of a straight line. A straight line can be drawn like this. A straight line can be drawn in many different ways. Think about ways in which a straight line can represent a one-to-one -one relation, one-to-many relation, or many-to-one relation. 